This conference will now be recorded. Okay, I think uh, we can start now. So let me introduce myself, guys, um, and then I'll tell you what is that we are going to look at, and then we can uh, discuss. Okay. So uh, myself, uh, Shiv Prasad. Okay, I'm currently working as a cloud and DevOps consultant. Uh, training is a part time that I do guys. Uh, I have been training people on various technologies um, like uh, Linux operating systems, virtualization, VMware, and then in cloud like AWS, Azure, GCP, and and DevOps as well. My primary skill set is in uh, virtualization and uh, in DevOps, it's more of containerization and Kubernetes. And along with this, I also work with various tools in terms of building a complete CI CD pipeline. Okay. So that's a quick introduction of mine, guys. Okay. I'll, so there are a lot of people, so it won't be possible for me to talk to each of you now. Uh, but I'll definitely talk once we are done with what I have to tell you. So I believe that the demo session is more of your session because there are a lot of people from various backgrounds uh, joined here. You might have your own questions of what is what and all. So I believe my job here is to address all of your questions. But before we address those questions, I want to set the context of, uh, and I want to get everyone onto the same page to understand what are we actually looking into. So for that, I have a few slides where I'm going to talk about what is DevOps, uh, what is that we do, okay and uh, why it is uh, being adopted and where it has started all of those things too so that everybody is on the same page once i'm done with that and uh, it's you it will be your turn to ask what are the questions that you have and i'm going to address those things sounds good anyone has any questions so far sure no problem okay so let's get started guys okay so We'll be talking about very high level understanding of what DevOps, where it all started, why people are using it. Okay. So DevOps, by the definition, if you look into DevOps, DevOps is a combination of two things. One is development and operations. Okay. So different people define DevOps in different ways. But we have picked up the uh, Wikipedia, uh, you know, definition of what DevOps is basically. So DevOps is a software engineering culture and practice that aims at unifying software development and software operations. So guys, uh, anything that we do when we are working for some company, no matter what company that we are doing, like at the end of the day, we are actually supporting these two strategies, right? Development and operations. But this operations of development and operations have been done in a different way. But when DevOps came into picture, people started doing these things in a different way. That's what we are going to look at. So DevOps aims at shorter development cycles, okay? Increased deployment frequency, more dependable releases, in close alignment with business objectives. So the main objective of DevOps is to make sure their development life cycles are shorter because of which the deployment would be more frequently happening and dependable releases so that there won't be much of the uh, errors in the code that they are releasing. And at the end of the day, it is driving towards your business objectives, okay? This is what uh, the definition that Wikipedia uh, says, guys. What DevOps is, by the way. So DevOps is not a technology, by the way, guys. So people always assume DevOps is a technology. Not, not really. DevOps is a culture or it's a methodology, okay? The way we define the process is nothing but DevOps, okay? DevOps is first a culture of collaboration between developers and operations teams. So wherever we whenever we are talking about devops the main purpose or the main aim of devops is the collaboration between these two teams guys which is development and operations that's what it all talks about we all so 
the main focus of devops is to increase the communications or gaps in between uh, the developers and operations teams this culture has given rise to a set of practices okay devops is a grassroots movement by practitioners for practitioners and what devops is not so devops is not a job title devops is not a product devops is not a standard okay but uh, neither devops is a tool okay devops is not tools but tools are essential to success in devops so devops is not a one single tool that we talk about but to achieve devops strategies we will be using various tools which collaborate with each other to form a complete uh, devops environment uh i'll take a pause any questions here anyone yes no uh no, no sure yeah we are good okay thank you no, so no. let us talk okay thank you thank you Bankit. so let us talk about the history guys so it all started you know the entire the devops has been started by one frustrated manager i'll tell you the story so there was a guy who is patrick de Bois, okay so he is the person where who has knowledge of both like he knows the development he also knows the operation like how the operations used to happen and he is also a developer by the way so he was a manager for one of the organization and most of the time his job was to fix the issues between or resolve the conflicts between development team and operations team okay so like what are the issues so development teams writes the code send it to operations and operation teams fails to deploy it or there is an issue in the operations and the operation says that uh, all our uh, servers are okay we have a good ram cpu network and disk but code is not working developer would say that things are working locally on my mission why doesn't it work on your missions so this guy's job was to actually fix these issues because he is the one who knows both but otherwise if you look into the strategies like if you are experienced people here we know right as if you are operations guy you never talk to you never get a chance to talk to developers when you are working in the actual projects and vice versa developers never get a chance to talk to operations team so that is where this guy internally formed a team and he realized that throughout the day most of his time was contributed for resolving the issues between developer and operation so what he did internally he took some people from devops he took some people from operations he made a team and he called it devops team and whatever the tasks were assigned to this devops team and he he saw that the conflicts were very less or there were no conflicts at all comparatively with the other teams where the development team is working separately and operation team is working separately okay so that's where he created a team of uh, guys with both skill set like operations and development and uh, the work that is assigned to them were able to complete without any resolutions and he was free from in involving in the calls where he could uh, resolve the issues and all so that's where it has started let, let, let us see the story so parallelly along with the devops there was one more movement which was happening which is agile okay so agile software development was gaining popularity but it was also suffering from a growing divide between development and operation so actually when we talk about these models we call it software development life cycle models okay we have a lot of models guys we have waterfall models we have rad model we have v model right so to overcome all the flaws in this specific models agile was becoming more popular back then in like in 2007 but this agile when it has started it is still dividing or growing the uh, distance between these two teams okay so that's where when patrick dubois an engineer with experience doing both dev and operations was doing testing on a project and became frustrated by the huge divide between dev and operations so later in 2008 patrick and andrew 
Sharif met in Agile conference. So Agile was growing. There were uh, conferences happening worldwide. So in 2008, along with the boys, there is a, a one more guy, which is Andrew. So they both started talking to each other when these guys talk to uh, the most of the managers from various countries and various departments. They realized that everybody is doing the same job of resolving the conflicts between development and operations team. So they began to start conversations and seek other interested in bringing the divide between devs and ops. So then that's where they proposed their idea of how this DevOps work will and all. And in June 23, 2009, John Aspel and Paul Hamal gave a talk at Velocity Conference. Okay, it was a conference and 10 plus deploys per day. Dev and Ops cooperation at Flickr. Okay, Patrick was watching via live stream. So people began discussing via Twitter. So and they, they talked about this, all of these things, but they didn't name it as DevOps, by the way. But in October 30, 2019, Patrick hosted the first DevOps day in Ghent, Belgium, a conference for both devs and operations engineers. So the conversation continued on Twitter with hashtag DevOps. That's where this term DevOps has been started. Okay, and DevOps grow into an organic grassroots movement all over the world and spawned many tools to support practices valued by DevOps to, to support these practices huge number of open source tools came into existence and uh, depending on the requirement people started using those uh, tools and building their devops strategies guys so the devops movement has not stopped growing since 2009 it has started since then and no longer a small niche movement okay it became so huge that everybody as of today is trying to get into both agile and uh, devops now once the devops has started agile and devops both uh brand together in hand in hand became mainstream uh spawned a large variety of tools completely changed the it industry forever the way we looked at things before this agile and devops came into picture has completely changed after their existence has started up uh, i'll take a pause any questions before we get further No issues. Okay. So, no. Okay, fine. Thank you. So the goals. So usually, if you look into the traditional methods, uh, the, the, there is always a fight between development team and operations team, guys. Let me tell you. So development teams' main responsibility is to fix the issues and then release the code on time. But operations team is to they doesn't really bother about the code operations team is to make sure the servers are up and running throughout the time like without any downtimes and they are accessible at any point of time that means stability so the aim or the goal of these two teams were completely different where development's main focus is to speed in the sense the way the, the release has to be very frequent. They have to fix the issues. They have to do the things very faster and operations teams responsibility is to make sure the servers are stable. Okay, so under the traditional separations between dev and ops dev and ops have different and opposing goals. So their goals were completely different. So that's made them uh, so different that operations team never bother about development and vice versa development never bother about operations but with the devops the strategy has been changed okay now both of them uh, development and operations their aim is to make sure they are able to release the code uh, faster and at the same time the code is also stable so they have set the same goal for both the dev and ops team which is speed and stability devops culture is about collaboration between dev and ops with devops dev and ops work together and share the same goal so the goal of devops culture with devops dev and ops are playing on the same team 
they are not two different teams and dev and ops share the same goals so the goals include faster time to market okay more frequent releases and few production failures and immediate recovery from failures so there are very fewer failures even in case there is a failure okay so how we revert back so what is the contingency plan that we have so it is also faster with devops strategies so devops is about dev and ops working together you hear this a lot many times guys so we talk about dev and ops talking to each other working together collaborating with each other that's the main focus by the way in a devops culture devs care about stability as well as speed and ops care about speed as well as stability the traditional roles of developer and operational engineers can even become blurred under devops instead of throwing code over the wall dev and ops work together to create and use tools and process that supports both speed and stability okay so usually uh, if you look into the traditional methods developers write the code and the code is sent to the qa team they verify it if not working or if not meet they met meeting the expectations they send the code back to developers they work it once this game is done finally they send the code to operations team and they deploy the code if something goes wrong all operation team do is that they say that our servers are okay okay our servers are running fine we gen generally we create a charts of memory utilization cpu utilization network utilization disk utilization we put them in place i see all are minimal still your code is not working so this is what happens in a traditional methods but devops recognizes that dev and ops are more powerful when they are together okay and uh, let's look into the traditional method and the devops method and so that you understand the differences so devs write the code see we have developer qa team and operations developer write the code and they send it to a qa team and the qa team starts analyzing the code if it is not meeting up to the expectations they again send back the code to the developers to fix the issues okay code bounces back and forth between dev and qa as qa discovers problems and dev fixes them finally it is ready for production so when it's ready for production the code is sent to the operations team okay and uh, qa and dev throws the code over the wall to operations and there is a problem ops throw it back over the wall to the dev team each group's domain is a black box to each other because developers are not sure what qa and operations does and operations teams are not sure what qa and development team does so our systems are fine it's your code but the code is working on my machine so developers usually test the code on the local machines and they say that it's working on my machine why is not working on your machine because they are not aware of how the systems work by the way so dev and ops are black boxes to each other which leads to a finger pointing because ops is a black box devs don't really trust them and ops doesn't really trust dev and that's the reason you know this happens uh, so uh, at any point you, you talk to an operations guy they say that uh, there is a release today okay but the code is stable now we are still running on the old version if you see the traditional methods the operations team used to run the code of very old version because they are stable and they are very afraid of uh, migrating it to the newer version of the code but that's not the case in devops in devops they release the code every one month or every two months depending on the uh, their uh, operational requirement or their release strategies so the, every couple of months or every couple of weeks there is a new code that is released to the production but that was not the case traditionally traditionally if there is a version 10 running there are systems still running like version 6 or version 7 that's how things are and devops dev, dev and ops have different priorities which uh, pits them against each other ops view devs as a breaking stability and dev see ops as a obstacle to deliver their code because if the code is not working properly if the operation team updates the version from an old version to newer version if that is not working properly and things are on top of ops head right it's their responsibility to make sure uh, the code is stable and the servers are stable 
so that's where the blame game starts even if you want to work together dev is measured by delivering futures which means uh, deploying changes and ops is measured by uptime but changes are bad for stability but with the devops downsides of traditional methods is black boxes led to finger pointing lengthy process means slow time to market lack of automation means things like bills and deployments or inconsistence it takes a longer time to identify and fix the problems when you are doing traditionally but with the devops the story is completely different guys so devs write code code commit trigger automatic builds integrates and tests qa can get their hands on it almost immediately once it is ready kick off the automated deployment to production so the whole process build integrate test and deploy is handled by all of these three teams developers qa and product operations and they maintain the code and all of this process build integrate test and deploy happens automatically with the help of scripts there is no manual intervention here since everybody everything is automated it is much easier to deploy while keeping things stable and deployment can occur much more frequently getting features into hands of customers faster and uh, the the latest deployment broke something in production fortunately automated monitoring notifies the team immediately and the team does a rollback of deployment deploying the uh, previous work versions uh, fixing the problems quickly an hour later the dev team was able to deploy a fixed version of the new code just to give an example here guys you know whenever we update our iPhones or Android phones with the latest versions or there is a new release of the uh, in a major version and after some couple of days you see that people are complaining their camera is not working or there is some issue with the screen there is a heat uh, things and all what they do generally so they immediately release a patch to it they say that apply this patch all the bugs that you have will be fixed and they are not taking months or years to release that patch guys they are just taking hours to notify or to get the problem that they have and they are releasing a patch immediately that is the advantage that we get when we use devops okay which is not quite possible when things are traditional if you look into the uh, nokia phones even nokia for there were n series nokia phones or double six double zero nokia phones which came up with they were also called as smartphones but they came with one version they died with the same version but that's not the case now when you buy a smartphone now it might be coming with the older version but the moment it's in your hands you can update it to the latest version and by the time you like kind of uh, end of life of your mobile phone it is on a different version altogether right because we are everybody started using devops and uh, they are able to push the changes uh, with less efforts so dev and ops work together to build a robust way of changing code quickly and reliability both dev and ops work together to prioritize both speed of delivery and stability automation lead to consistency because things are not done manually it is all automated scripted in place so there are very few chances of uh, you know the deployment failures or inconsistency i don't think there will be any consistency inconsistency if you are doing with the automations build testing and deployment happened the same way every time you run it building testing and deploying happened much more quickly and more often so good monitoring so monitoring also plays a very major role plus the uh, swift deployment process ensured problems could be fixed even before user notified them dev and ops work together upfront to build good process even though a code change caused a problem user experienced little or no downtime so with devops we have a happier teams and happier customers happier team tech employees tend to be happier doing devops than under traditional silos more time involving and less time putting out fires they don't feel like they have to figure to get their work out there and operations people don't have to fight dev to keep the system stable 
happy customers devops lets you give customers the features they want quickly and you don't have to sacrifice stability to do it any questions here guys so far so one question so in order to do a combination the between the developer and the operations so what sorts of tools do we need to use here there are wide variety of tools okay depending on your code base depending on your uh, what we call uh, the requirement we use different tools if you see on the picture now so whatever you see on the left hand side which is planning code base code build testing all of this is called as a continuous integration ci is what we call and everything that you see on the right is called continuous deployment in between is something that have integrations like if you example for integrations we have tools like jenkins bamboo and uh, Trivers CI, but Jenkins yeah, is most widely used. But there are also other tools which are available like Bamboo and Trivers. So for every uh, thing that you want now, code base like we have GitHub. Apart from GitHub, we have Bitbucket, we have Code Commit. All of this does the same thing, but they are from different vendors. That's how things are. Okay, so I mean now the question is uh, in a given agile uh, sprint, right? So mm -hmm. all these things will happen simultaneously Meaning like development will do the development using those left hand side tools and the, In the middle integration meaning the testing will also will happen between the integration exactly. and the, Okay, that's the whole purpose of uh, DevOps true every sprint has to undergo all of this process it has to undergo uh, you know integrations building testing deployment and then monitoring So even in the tradition also we used to for example, right? Even in the tradition also say like uh, uh, The front-end tool is JUnit, right? Mm -hmm. And we used to use the Jenkins as a source safe where we deploy the code and You know testers will take that uh, Code from the Jenkins and then they will test it if it is, you know passed, and then they will sign off and See, the operations yeah. team True. team they right? it is the same process but the testing would start only once all the code is developed isn't it and these things that is were that all, right see uh, so you mean to say that within the given uh, the sprint you mean to say that yes like let's say if you have a project of 10 sprints and you have started right. sprint one in the sprint one the whole flow would continue once that is done they would showcase like i think you are aware of how sprint works right so they would showcase right. the product that they, they do a demo and if there are anything that enhancements they try to put that in sprint two and they start working on right. that and so that's how right. things work and once that is done they are going to merge the code of both and then release it this is what happens in devops so agile is what we are talking about sprint but devops is something where we are uh, giving strength to agile by using these tools for deploying everything automatically not doing manual process so agile and devops both are completely two different things agile is where we we are overcoming the uh, drawbacks that we have in waterfall model where we are dividing the entire project into small chunks and we are doing it but when we talk about devops devops is more of a technology side of building CI CD by using various tools and automating the whole process rather doing things manually 
so the moment the developer commits the code the code undergoes like kind of compilation uh, building of code testing strategies and the code gets deployed and the deployed code gets monitored automatically if something happens uh, once the code is uh, deployed that is, uh, there is a proactive monitoring which is there and that sends alerts to the team saying that this specific server is running out of space or or behaving abnormally so where the team would notify that case and they look into it and they try to fix the problem okay got it now okay okay yeah so these kind of issues in the traditional we used to see when you are deploying right so now we will exactly. see during the process okay okay that's True. the difference that's the process that's the, that's the main difference okay so that's all Thank i have you. to talk about guys uh, to set the context of what is what i think those who are not aware at least you understood what is a kind of devops right so now it's your turn let me know if you have any questions and i'm here to address them can you explain us uh, these uh, integration tools for example like puppet chef so what's the difference between those two why we have so, two different tools see uh let me show you one picture before i get there see this devops when it has started right it gave a boost for all the open source community in the sense so we have waterfall model and to overcome the flaws of waterfall model and next mod model came into picture like v model to overcome the flaws of it the next model came into picture right the same way when we talk about devops like there are different tools available like for version controlling which is source code management we have gitlab we have github we have subversion we have ip ispw we have artifactory we have nexus bitbucket and perforce all of this at a high level does the same thing they does what code management but they are from different vendors in the sense when we talk about gitlab it is from gitlab gitlab itself is own thing github is an open source one subversion ipsw we have bitbucket bitbucket is from um, atlassian uh, tools so all of these are the same so few companies use github few use bitbucket okay that all depends on their strategies or their partnership with the specific tools and all same way when we talk about the deployment tools here the green one we have terraform we have go cd we have ca all of this code deploy these are like from different vendors okay and talking about your uh, where is this configuration management chef ansible puppet salt stack cf engine packer uh, rudder all of these are also the same thing whatever chef is capable of doing same thing is capable of doing with ansible same thing can be achieved with salt stack same thing can be achieved with puppet but only difference is that different organization choose different tools depending on the kind of skill set or people that they have in the organizations like if we talk about chef chef is built based on ruby okay if you have to automate things by using chef you should be good in writing a ruby code if you go with ansible ansible is built by using python but the automation is happens via uh, aml code or json code puppet has their own language dsl language like salt has their own language like this so the choice of these tools varies from client to client depending on the skill set that they have guys that's it nothing much like otherwise okay. at a yeah. very high level whatever chef is capable of doing can be achieved by using the rest of the tools as well same with monitoring there are different monitoring tools the different cloud solutions when we talk about cloud see we have aws we have azure we have google cloud openshift ibm cloud so the high to high level the concept of cloud is the same but they are from different vendors right I That's mean, I, I'm not aware of this, um, this periodic table style uh, chart. This is amazing. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yep. 
so I have one question. Go ahead, please. Saurabh. Yeah, so uh, when we talk about like we do uh, uh, like CI and CD, then uh, if we are some suppose I'm using Jenkins and maybe you show that chef is also one tool for this configuration. So if I say like I want to uh, use kind of languages because right now I'm working with Java. So do I need to learn this Ruby or different different languages for that and how much label of the I need to cover uh, to make his configuration like if I use Jenkins then there are options we can do with the you know the shell scripting batch scripting lots of options are there we can write our uh, code like group thing yeah so groovy is fine uh, shell scripting is fine so do we need to learn more about the other languages as well if i go for different tools as well yeah that's an interesting question guys see most of us have and that's where like i said right uh, now organizations are becoming choosy in terms of selecting the skill sets so that's where our uh, you know selection of tool comes into picture so we will be selecting the tools which are most widely used in the market okay if you look now chef is more of a ruby thing okay we need to know ruby's uh, syntaxes how ruby works writing ruby code so that's the reason we will be working on ansible because ansible is written in aml and it has uh, more market comparatively than chef i should say like people are leaning towards this because of lack of skill set because uh, chef can be written only by pure developers whereas when we talk about ansible we are going to write aml which is very easy for us to understand the syntaxes are easy the writing of code is easy understanding of code is easy so we'll be looking at this thing ansible okay you should be knowing aml but aml is used uh, in different languages as well if you look into cloud formations which is amazon's own deployment tool there also ansible is i mean aml is used that means if you are learning ansible you are learning aml which means aml can also be used in different tools as well get my point yes shell okay. scripts are different and these tools are different so these tools fall under category called infrastructure as a code So in the infrastructure as a code, there are a lot of tools like uh, Chef, like here we have Puppet and all. It is very difficult for us to cope up with the languages of these two. But let us concentrate on easy languages that people are using and the tools that are most widely being used. Like Ansible is one thing that is easy for us to learn and Terraform. Terraform is actually becoming more popular than any of the tools that we have seen so far because it is quite easy it is uh, easy to write the code and moreover it can integrate with various uh, you know providers that we have it can work with uh, aws it can work with gcp it can work with docker it can work with jenkins it can work with any tool that you want so but the code is the same okay so learning infrastructure as a code is important okay irrespective of tools and I would recommend these two. But if you're looking for Chef, obviously, yes, you are supposed to learn uh, Ruby. But our focus, even when you're learning this, we will try to learn the basic syntaxes of how they work because we are not developers again. Our role of administration and operations will remain the same. But there are few organizations based out of US, like the startup companies in US or product based companies. When they are hiring you, they expect that when you say you know Chef, they expect that you also know how to write a Ruby code as well. So that's one expectation that you need to set before you are hired so that they know your skill set is what is what and all. Yeah, thanks. Anything else? No, thanks. Uh, yeah, Shiva Mohana here. Hello, Mohana. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, totally from a uh, different uh, platform. Like I was working on SAP BW, it means uh, data warehouse. So what would be the prerequisites for this course, uh, this course uh, that would uh, really help me? So 
guys and again this answer is for all of you like whoever is from different background non it or or kill dbs or whoever like if you're not into operations team especially like uh, operations and you are into different it strategies and you want to look up to this devops and all the major prerequisite would be knowing linux so without linux there is no way forward because all the tools that we are going to work will be deployed on linux based operating systems only okay linux acts as a base for all of the tools that you see on the screen here and linux is most widely used so that we will be talking in the sessions okay uh, the survival linux what i call uh, usually uh, linux is huge but we are not going to look into all the concepts of linux but concepts which are useful for us to work with devops those concepts we'll be teaching in the class and a bit of coding is needed coding in the sense i'm not talking about java i'm not talking about dot net or anything else i'm talking about automations like scripting scripting in the sense uh, uh knowing shell script or bash scripting or python scripting for automating your day-to-day -day activities that is something mandatory along with this a cloud which is where we use aws or azure or gcp but in our case we'll be looking at aws and the devops tools like this looks so huge but this is the kind of profiles that everybody is looking in the market now so we will be covering linux we will talk about a bit of scripting i'm not going to cover a depth of scripting but we will uh, i can talk about basics but linux whatever we look into the linux that should be helpful for us and whatever we do in devops and we will be doing it in aws and devops only so this is what you need to be aware of uh, mohana okay yeah okay. yeah thank you any questions uh, yeah hi shiva uh, this is abhinash hello abhinash yeah i'm basically from a performance testing background mm -hmm. uh, i'm i'm not good at uh, scripting actually but i want to uh, yeah yeah actually i want to go into devops so what level of the uh, scripting skills are required uh, to move into the devops and uh, uh, yeah so guys see i cannot just draw a line and tell you that this is what you should be knowing and this is what you should be knowing right see thing is that depends on the employer who is hiring you depending on the product that you are working for organizations the team structure that you are working with to be very frank when we are working in enterprises where the ci cd pipeline the complete ci cd pipeline is built your role will be very limited okay and i cannot guarantee that as well but if you are working for some organizations where they hire you as a contractor and they have some task and they tell you that your job is to automate everything in that case you should be knowing everything give me point right so yeah yeah at the end of the day my suggestion would be you should be able to understand the requirement and at least you should be able to search for the code like everything is out there in the internet get the code customize it based on your requirement and put that in place if you can do this that is more than sufficient so shiva for instance can you just take one small uh, example and explain us See, and I'm also talking about automating, second. right? I, if, I, if I tell you that, can you write a script for automating the provisioning of an EC2 instance? Like the traditional method is whenever there is a request coming up, uh, we are actually getting into console, we are selecting the AMI, and then we are selecting all the options and we are provisioning it. And developers has to wait for you every time. You are on a vacation, the request will wait for next day to provision. So your manager is asking you to, Hey Shiva, can you just write a script so that in your absence, even developers can provision the instance by themselves? So you have to write a script for that. 
Okay. Okay. Like you're taking a backups now, like every day you are doing a manual backups. Why do you want to take manual backups? Like for some reasons you got delayed. Maybe you are in a meeting and you forgot to take a backup. Why do you want to do things manually? Have a script in place and put a cron job, which will do automatic uh, taking of automatic snapshots uh, where you don't have to be there because you have already written a scripts. It's all about it's the same commands that we use on a CLI, but we put them in a script so that when the time strikes, the script will execute and it will take a snapshot. Like these are what I'm talking about when I say automation. So this code that I told you now, like taking a snapshot, I can write a bash script for this. I can write a JavaScript. I can write a Python. Okay, I can also write infrastructure as a code here. But preferably, people are choosing either bash script or PowerShell. I mean uh, Python. So that you should be aware of. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Thank you, sir. Yep. Nice, nice, nice explanation. Appreciate. It. Thanks. Thank Anything else guys anything that you wanted to know? Uh, Shiva again, uh, my question is um, like uh, till like till Jenkins everything is fine like we uh, suppose created a pipeline and uh, the build is uh, coming on suppose daily basis where which we called interim builds and we are receiving them. Okay, and so uh, where this uh, shap and and civil comes into picture in the real world where is that where where does where this uh chef and and civil these comes into picture okay 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 i mean okay your question is like till jenkins you are aware of the process like where are we going to use chef and ansible right no, yeah okay so you have a code let's say suppose you are maintaining a website i'm just giving a simple example mm -hmm. or let's take an example of the mobile phones per se like you have started a new mobile phone company like let's like say one plus okay and there are thousand devices that you are maintaining and your developers has written a code for your thousand devices they tested it they use jenkins and they are going to deploy it now that means the code that is written or the new features that you have put that has to be deployed to this thousand nodes that you have how are we going to do that is with the help of chef and ansible which is configuration management tools you have like thousand servers which are running mm -hmm. let's say tomcat and you have developed a code a new tomcat var file has come now this var file has to be deployed onto this thousand then we are going to use uh, chef for ansible or puppet or this thousand servers are running and there is an issue some developer has logged into one of the server maybe 50th server and um, he did some changes because of which this 50th server is running abnormally imagine if there is no configuration management tools okay and fixing up identifying mm -hmm. that there is a server problem with the 50th server is biggest task even if you identify what changes they have done you are not sure so with configuration management the process is like all the configuration files which are required for your application to run those configuration files are maintained in the configuration management server like in our case it could be chef or ansible so the entire desired state is maintained here and this desired state is pushed to the new servers if any change is happening here and it periodically you can write some scripts which will look into these things okay now it has to look like abc this is a configuration file now for some reasons my configuration file is looking like abd that means it is not matching so your configuration server will remove the changed one and it try to put whatever you put in the centralized server abc so with this the fixing of problems is very easy you cannot just manually push the code to 100 server to not only 100 servers like we have if we talk about theater architectures 
so we have load balancers we have application servers we have database servers maintaining this state individual is not a small thing so with using configuration management tools the state is maintained as centralized location any changes that you want to do you are doing on this one single location and pushing those changes to all the servers so in this way the code that you are deploying or the configuration that you are doing is consistent across all the servers okay. if you are doing the manual upgradations or manual configuration changes across all the nodes there are high chances that we do a uh, wrong configurations and we commit those changes but if it is via configuration management, we are overcoming those uh, hassles. Okay, so yeah, I think uh, in my organization, um, daily interim builds come and the it went into Dropbox and on the Slack notification comes like build has been successfully uh, uploaded to the Dropbox. So our task is to manually download. So you are saying instead of uh, manual thing uh, we can use the chef and uh, we can get the advantage of uh, automatic deployment to machines. exactly, exactly. Oh, okay, okay. okay thanks yep. anything else any questions So one more question, uh, Shiva. This is Narendra again. Yeah. Narendra. So from DevOps, after DevOps, what's next? What is the new, or probably new things are going to come into this picture? More DevOps. <laughs> is it in? Okay. More DevOps, <laughs> more DevOps in the yes. sense like. Thing is, like if you, I think Subha uh, Saurabh was talking, right? See, DevOps is different for different organizations. Like I said, it's not a practice or it's not a set of a thing that we say that okay this is how things has to work like i am going to build a cicd pipeline which works best for my situation like in subha's case or saurabh case the thing is they haven't automated the complete process but there is still scope for them to automate and overcome the man interventions right like for him he's already working in a devops strategy but still there are areas where he can automate the process so there is no end to this now as long as there is a software deployment happening there is always a scope for us to automate the whole process so there is no next at least as of now i don't see anything further uh, beyond this maybe beyond this the situation would be like like you know the entire code is deployed and there is a monitoring system which is monitoring so now at this point of time monitoring system is alerting us saying that there is an issue maybe going forward whenever based on the alerts you may be your monitoring system itself it will go to the server and fix the problem that might be more announcement right where we are overcoming the malintervention mm -hmm. like this could be the process but i don't see anything beyond this now so there will be For some example, like, so these... yeah yeah so the coordination between the development QA all these operations is also it's getting um, automated right for example the yes. company called we work see as of now as of now those automations those uh, testings are manual like 80 percent of the cases it is manual only but because of lack of skill set who can actually write the code to automate it the, the, no, see the next stages for the organization is to automate that as well there are very few if you talk about netflix netflix does deployment every 10 minutes or two hours is what they say like every two hours there is a new deployment happening to a production everything is automated there but in some cases the testings are manual okay. they don't do automatic yeah. testing or they don't integrate it So for those who are not done that automatically their next focus which would be to automate that so for automation they need to write scripts they test it verify it and then they put in place got it yeah yeah thanks thanks you yep.
Any more questions? Sir, uh, I have one question. Uh, that's uh, uh, to automate the code. Uh, which language is like um, up to the requisite to for like uh, better understanding of the DevOps? Like, should I go for R language or Java or? No, not at all. Like Groovy is something that we use. See, no matter what code we are using, guys, the process is the same that you need to understand first. Like when I say CI/CD pipeline, let me show you a sample pipeline. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah I'm here. Oh, okay, thanks. Like, you know, this is a different thing. CI CD pipeline, if you see here, they commit the code, build gets triggered, build happens, notify <laughs> build outcome, run test, notify test outcome, finally deploy to production, right? This is the CI CD pipeline. Like, the goal, let's say you are maintaining some websites here, your organization is like Netflix. So developers are going to write some code for the Netflix application. They are going to drill a bigger, it gets it goes all the stages. So this code can be anything. It could be Java, it could be .NET, it could be Python, it could be Groovy, no matter what. Go language, anything. But our job is to automate this process. So when the, let's say whenever developer is committing the code, the build has to trigger. Once the build is triggered, it should notify. It should send a Slack notification, or it should a team notification. For this, we are not writing our language. We might use Go language because all of this happens with the help of Jenkins. And most of the time, Jenkins can be automated by using Groovy scripts. Like this is what you need to know. Okay, sir. The Groovy scripts. And, yes. and the Groovy scripts are for... Uh, uh, like java and r or python it works for every every language right yeah okay thank you so there are different tools guys okay there are different tools and all but the main because it won't be possible for us to get into each and every tool and master them okay but you should be knowing one tool like when we talk about configuration management you should be good enough with one tool when we talk about code management you should be good enough with one tool once you are good enough with that tool and you know the whole process it is very easy for you to work with any tool because the process remains the same the vendor varies that's it yeah you're right no matter which tool you take you know you have to write if then else everywhere yes the that's, structure that's will be the yeah. syntax will be different structure would be the same but the logic will almost the same yeah that's right hello shiva garu yep. uh hi Indy. Uh, sorry to interrupt you so the batch is starting from monday onwards timings would be from 7 to 8 a.m ist I'll be sharing all the details to your mail ID. So please uh, make a note of it or uh, for the other details, you please you can reach us on the numbers or mail ID, whatever I have provided in the chart. Thank you. Shivagari, please you can continue. Yep. And also, uh, Shiva, is there any like uh, certifications, those kind of stuff is there in DevOps? So DevOps has a certification from DevOps school, which is more of a managerial things from the technical standpoint. There is no specific DevOps certification, but the communist like Jenkins has their own certification. Chef has their own certification. Ansible has their own like this. We have right. Okay. So there is one DevOps certifications from uh, Linux foundations, but which is not worth doing. We don't have to worry about that. Right, okay. 
Anything else? Sir, uh, one thing, this this course is, will also cover the part of the AWS. Like this is uh, the AWS with DevOps? Yes, yes. We'll be covering AWS too. Okay. And course is how long, uh, Shiva? It would take uh, six, six and a half weeks. Six and a half weeks. Okay, so it means one and a half month. One and a half month. Okay. Yep. And it's um every day class or only weekend, Saturday, Sundays? No, no, it's every day class, Monday to Friday. But mm -hmm. sometimes we'll have to put sessions on weekends too to cover the concepts or where some topics need some extra time. So those things we'll try to cover them on weekends. Mm -hmm. And um, so this one class will be online also, right? Yes, it's online. Because I am not in the... Okay. Yes, it's online session and you will be forwarded the videos right after we come to the sessions okay and can we get today's session video yes you will be if getting this today's session okay. video as well if you have already shared your details like uh, email address and they will send you a link mm -hmm. which will have this uh, mm -hmm. video in it uh Thank so, you. so so what the system requirements for this one like any specific uh, OS or uh, like uh, versions things? not really guys so everything we'll be doing it on aws cloud okay so we won't be installing much of the softwares on our local machines but if it has like windows 10 and 4 gb ram that should be more than sufficient okay thank you but Shiva, you said like you know you will start with uh, Linux, right? So Linux even, is it's a different operating system. Linux also we will be deploying on AWS only, and we'll do it. Okay, okay. It's an operating system, so we will provision operating system in AWS, and we'll try to work on that. So we can do that by uh, having a free trial account of the AWS, right? Yes. Okay. You don't have to pay a single NP, a uh, single penny there, and everything can be done with free tire uh, limits only. Okay. Anything else, guys? And also one final question. Mm -hmm. So all this automation process will be done both, right? Both in a sense like a database, um, required files and application required files also, right? Yes. And when you, when you do the process, all the database files should go to the server side. All the application files should go to the application server side. Mm -hmm. Yep, those kind of okay, okay. And what about the I just wanted to, you know, uh, bring this to the highlight like Azure. Azure also will do the most of the stuff, especially from the back end side, right? Mm -hmm. You can do the scheduling, you can do all the automation process where the you know dba interaction will be very minimal mm -hmm. see it's the same like whatever azure is giving you same has to be given by aws same has to be offered by gcp and same has to mm -hmm. be offered by any other cloud which comes into the market okay but it's mm -hmm. all about the market share how many people are using Azure and how many are using AWS? That matters here. Like right, right. AWS has more market share comparatively with Azure. Azure, so yes. The demand and opportunities for AWS is more comparatively with Azure. That's the whole point. 
right yeah even still today also the leader is aws only aws true Okay. Uh, hello, Shiva. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Who's Who's Narendra? Or Oza? Talk. Yeah, Oza. Talk. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, I have one question that um, uh, will we be covering this DevOps from the perspective of developers or from the perspective of system administrators? Uh, see. It includes both, but more focus is on uh, operations, like in uh, from the infrastructure point of view. Okay, sir. Like, like the end of the day, matter. end of the day, you should be knowing what developers are doing as well. Like I said, so we like no matter what code that we write, right? So developer maybe he might be a full stack developer or he might be a dot net developer, Java developer. We are not getting into those details, but we will take Java as a sample here and we look into their point of view as well like what is that they do and what is our responsibilities that's all we do we understand okay. both yes okay sir. thank you yeah sure one last question i'm abhinash abhinash go ahead please yeah uh, as part of grafana um, are you going to cover uh, how to add the counters and what are the what is the purpose of the counters and those uh, things also are, not uh, really Abhinash, no so in, from point of grafana i will show you the integrations and the creation of dashboards is something that we see because see if you want to write those grafana queries and all you should be knowing the uh you know that uh query language you should be aware of and that's uh, not okay. common but the requirements of writing the query is not same for everyone right it varies from requirement to requirement like what is that you're looking for so that, that i'm not going to cover yeah actually the thing is uh, mostly by using uh, monitoring tools uh, we should be uh, knowing like uh, what is the cpu utilization memory utilization and uh, disk utilization or uh, yes what is that so per set second? of standard okay. metrics we'll be looking into but writing the some customized queries to get what we want is not something that we look at Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Yep. So, if no questions, guys, then maybe we can end the session for today and we can see you in classes. Thank you so much, Shiva. Really appreciate it. Uh, it was awesome class. Thank you. Thank you, Narendra. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you all guys. Thank Thanks for joining the session. And hope I have addressed all the questions that you have. And in case if you have any, uh, we can continue them in our sessions. Okay. Yep. Sure. Yep. Sure. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good day. Thanks, Shiva. Thanks for all. Thank you. Thank you, Subhu. Yeah, bye. Yeah.